Hello, uh, this is Pastor Victor and today in this video I want to share something about the dynamics of grace. The dynamics of grace. So we are looking at the grace of God. The grace of God is, is everything to the believer. It's a fountain from which everything that we receive from God comes through. God's power, His glory is revealed through His grace. So it's important we understand the concept of the grace of God, the dynamics, and how this grace functions and how it works. I believe that will help us greatly to be able to relate well to the grace of God. The reason why most people are not able to benefit from the grace of God, even though it has been given, the Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men, bringing salvation and, you know, preaching us, telling us to deny ungodliness and all of that. That grace that has appeared, many have not been able to take advantage of that grace. In this teaching, I intend to show you the dynamics of the grace of God. The first one I want to share with you in this video is that grace can be increased. Grace can be increased. One dynamic fact about grace is that it can be increased. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. It's a grace and peace be multiplied so we can increase grace. Grace can be increased in a man's life. I believe that the man's success in the kingdom of God is as a result of the level of grace that he's functioning with. All of us are not operating at the same level of grace. Your effectiveness and the results that you command, that you control, things that comes to you, the possibilities of the spirit, it's as a result of the level of the grace of God upon your life. So it's important that you, every night that you grow in grace, that's about the growing grace, you increase in the grace of God. And grace can be increased in your life. Hallelujah, very important. There are keys to that. Last week I taught on four keys to activate the grace of God. If you go to our YouTube channel, you get that teaching that how you can increase grace upon your life. Grace can be increased. In fact, one of the ways to increase grace is by your giving. The Bible says, when we give, God causes His grace to abound unto us. I will have all sufficiency and we abound unto every good. And number two dynamic of grace that I want to share with you, the second thing I want to share about the dynamics of God, that grace must be received. Grace must be received. Grace, which is the unmerited favor of God. It is the completeness of God in the man's life. It is the divine influence of God which works in the man's spirit and produces results on the outside. That grace, the ability of God, is a mystery, you know. Sometimes I try to explain this to people. And grace is also the person of Jesus himself. But this grace that comes from God, you must receive it. Grace must be received. That's why today you have seven point something billion people on earth. Millions are going to hell all the time, simply because they did not receive the grace of God. That is how funny it is. How could somebody go to hell because he didn't receive grace? It's not because the person was a sinner or doing what is wrong or was doing something bad. That's not what took them to hell. What took them to hell because they did not receive the grace that was given to them. The Bible said the grace of God that brings salvation, it's great that brings salvation, has appeared. The problem is that many don't receive. They close their mouth shut and go to hell. Instead of saying that Jesus come into my life, I confess you as Lord of my life. That's receiving grace. And because they didn't receive that grace, the Bible says, you know, anyone who doesn't believe Jesus and all of that is condemned already. So grace must be received. Romans 5 verse 17 says, For by one man's offense death weighed by one, much more they which received the abundance of grace, and then for the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So grace must be received. So it makes no difference what the grace of God has made available. The Bible says, for you know the grace of Jesus Christ. What is that grace? That he became poor, that you might be made rich. So that exchange on the cross is the grace of God. So Jesus became poor, that you may be rich. But that's the grace of God. You have to receive it by faith. And if you don't receive it, it's not going to work for you. So you can be a Christian and still be poor, and still be broken, and still be sick. Simply because you refuse to receive the grace of God that will bring you prosperity, that will bring you health and all of that. So grace must be received. And that word received there is an active word, present active tense, which has to do with, is a Greek word, lambano, means actively receiving. So you must actively receive the grace of God to work for you. And if you receive abundance of grace, the Bible says you reign. The third thing I want to share with you about the dynamics of the grace of God is that grace is for humble. Grace is for the humble. Grace is for humble people. People who are proud cannot receive grace. James chapter 4, verse 7, verse 6 says, 
but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. So grace is for humble people. If you are proud, you cannot receive the grace of God. So I think going to hell is pride because you refuse to receive the grace of God that brought you salvation. It's that simple. So, you know, that is it. So grace is for humble people. If you are not humble, humility is very simple. Being what God says you should be, neither below nor above. Do you know that seeing yourself as nobody is pride? When you say, say, I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I can't do anything, that is pride because you are going against what God has said that you are a new creation, you are a chosen generation, show for the praises of Him that called you out of darkness into His marvelous light and all of that. And pride also means overestimation of yourself and of abilities. When you overestimate yourself, the grace of God will not be there to help you to do anything because now you can do it on your own and God leaves you to do it. So either way, either above or below, it is pride. So humility simply means functioning on the frequency of God, doing what God wants you to do, accepting what God says you are, and having that you know, attitude of humility, honoring all men, and giving honor to whom honor is due. Amen. The last thing I want to tell you about the grace of God is that grace flows toward rest. Grace flows towards a place of rest. When you are restless in your spirit, you have so much worry, anxiety, and all of that in your spirit. Grace cannot flow in your life. You can't have the flow of the spirit. You can't have love. You can't, you can't enjoy miracles. You can't enjoy signs and wonders and the power of God and all of that because, you know, there's so much agitation. You know, inside, worry, anxiety, all these things, they hinder the flow of the grace of God. But when you are restful, grace is given to you and grace flows toward you. Let me read a scripture and let's close this from the message translation, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. It says, Are you tired, worn out, bear not on religion? Come to me, Jesus is saying. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. This is grace. This is rest. You do what God wants you to do. Watch how Jesus is doing it and do it. When you do that, you are in a place of rest and grace flow toward you. I said, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. So we must learn how grace moves. Grace works. And grace flows when you are restful. The more restful you are, the more the grace of God works for you. Amen. And he said, I won't lay anything heavy or ill feature on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Who does not want this kind of life? Living freely and lightly. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray that this few teaching that I've shared with you helps you and impact your life greatly. God bless you and thank you for watching. Amen. Amen.